So hello and welcome to the Lewis Nichols Show in collaboration with Mr. Cornwall, Shane Solomon. And we're really excited to bring on our next guest, uh, Phil Tufnell. Thank you for coming down. No, pleasure to so, be here, mate. Yeah, it's great. Well, I've interviewed you before a couple of years ago, but this is the first time in person. So it's uh, great to have you down to, to Cornwall. Yes, and what a beautiful spot it is. But So I want to go back. This is kind of like a life stories. So going right. back from the very beginning oh, okay. to, to, where, to where you are now. So... Was sports always something that you loved growing up? Was it? Were you surrounded by it? Were your family quite sporty? Uh, yeah, uh, I had an older brother, four years older. So um, if you if you wanted to play cricket and football, you was always playing with the bigger boys, you know. Yeah. And so you had to be pretty good to get a game. So uh, I think that that helped me. Yeah, my mum and dad were um, well wonderful parents, really. They'd um, you know stand on the side of football pitches in the freezing cold and yeah. take all the nets along. So very fortunate to have a family like that who who supported me, but without being sort of like in your face about it, you know. It, it wasn't a pressure or anything. I just loved it, you know. Kickabouts in the garden yeah. with my mum and dad and my brother. Yeah, played, played sport all the time. Football in the winter, cricket in the summer. When was that moment when people were kind of talking and saying, you're, you're good at this. This is something that you could actually pursue. Well, I, I, I think I was a better footballer. Really? <laughs> yeah. I think I was a better footballer, you see. But um, um, so, I, I, you know, I had a few trials for a few clubs and played for the county and what have you. And I was sort of thinking to myself, well, I might go into a little, might go into a bit of football. You don't really think about that. You're still just out there enjoying it with yeah. your mates and what have you. Um, but then uh, a couple of a, a couple of lads came down and played for my uh, side, and I just looked at them, and they sort of like ran rings around me, and uh, you know were quicker than me, stronger than me, and, and I was a good footballer, and I just thought, oh crikey, you know what I mean? These boys are good. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but then, and I was a bit like that with the cricket, you see. Yeah, I, I was quite sort of naturally gifted, I think, you know what I mean, without sort of, you know, lots of nets and what have you. I just had an eye for a ball. And uh, and then just, oh, I never really thought, I never really thought it, that I thought that that moment that I was any good, to be honest with you. You just play what's in front of you, you know, and you play for the under-11s and then you, you do well at that and you go on to the under-13s and then you go on to that and then you sort of like, you know, I got signed up for the MCCYCs and then Middlesex picked me up and you play second 11 cricket and you try to do well at that and then you play for the first team and then you end up playing for England. So I never really thought at any stage that I was destined to be a cricketer. It just happened, gradually. It just sort of happened, to be honest wow. with you. I know. Yeah, I never had sort of pictures <laughs> of Ian Botham on the wall, you know, <laughs> sort of running into bowl. You know, I had uh, Ferraris and Linda Roussardi on the wall, you know. Um, so obviously with you were talking about going into cricket, but did you have a regular job before that? So yes. did you, what was that? Yeah, I was a silversmith. My father was a silversmith down at uh, Clerkenwell. Um, so we, we used to sort of like uh, do <laughs> hammer pots and pans, wow. to be honest with you, and then sort of polish them, silver plate them, like for the uh, Savoy, Dorchester and things like that. So uh, yeah, silver plated stuff for the hotel. So I went into that um, at 16, left school like you did. Back then, um, uh, with not particularly, I think I got an O level in art. That's what I got. <laughs> Would not have predicted that. At all. <laughs> got an O level in art uh, and not much else. Uh, and then went with my dad uh, to work. And then um, he um, sort of, um, he, he, so, so I, completely, I completely gave up the cricket for about three years. So, you know, I just was like, I got myself a little 50cc motorbike, you know was allowed into the Rising Sun pub, my local, and uh, sort of completely forgot about it. And then thankfully, one day, my dad was, um, we was at the bench hammering away, and he said, he said, he said, son, he said, your eyes have gone a bit dark. I've organised you a trial at Lord's for the MCCYCs. And I went, oh, I don't know whether I can be bothered, you know what I mean? And he said, um, uh, he, he said, I'm going to give you a full day's pay uh, and it's only two hours. And I went, even I could work that maths out. And so I decided, I went, all right, go on then. So uh, I got on me little, I got me little fizzy, um, found me cricket boots 
and then uh, fine, uh, and then sort of went down there. Quite enjoyed it. Did well as well, and it sort of yeah. came back very quickly, considering I sort of completely left it off, and um, and then got the call to sort of like join that. So I thought, oh, okay, I may as well give that a go. So got a lot to thank my father for. Very supportive. Very. <laughs> yes, yes, and he and he sort of um, and he, and he saw that I was. You know, I was, I was a good silversmith, you know, and I was sort of like, uh, you know, going to then carry on the the, the family business, yeah. so to speak. But he sort of said, you know, I mean, he said, if you've got a chance of playing a bit of cricket in the sunshine, boy, you know, give that a go. You know, he said, you don't really sit there and rip pots and pans like me for the rest of your life. You mentioned earlier, obviously, playing for England. Now, I can't imagine representing your country. That must give you such a big sense of pride. Yes. Can you remember when you found out that you were going to represent your country for cricket and how you felt at the time. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, it's one of those things that you just sort of, you, you, you kind of, in the back of your mind, that's what you're working towards, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, as you say, you never thought you'd do it, but, you you know, you, you know, a, a couple of my mates who were slightly older who I knew in the cricket and then got their Angus Fraser, uh, played for Middlesex, and he then got selected, and then you start going, oh, crack, you know, yeah. that's the next step, that's the next step. Um, and yeah, when you get selected, it's um, yeah, it's a strange feeling actually. Uh, you sort of, you sort of, uh, you, you sort of reach that sort of um, pinnacle. Yeah, you you know, and, and you think to yourself, "Oh crikey, you know what I mean? I've actually achieved this." Yeah. You know what I mean? Sort of subconsciously, with a little bit of conscious, sort yeah. of there. But all of a sudden, I'm at the top of this thing that I've tried to do. So you actually sort of like give yourself a bit of a pat on the back about that, and uh, and then you've got to try and sort of like accustom y- y- yourself to it. You know, because you're turning up there, and you and you know you're playing against the best in the world. You know, uh, uh, you know Australia and all these people. Um, you know, and you have to go out there and uh, do battle with them. You know, and you've got all your mates in that dressing yeah. room and all their mates are in that dressing room and they're all bloody pretty good, you know. And uh, you have to go out there and uh, try and turn them over, uh, which I quite enjoyed, you know. <laughs> it, it, I, I think, actually, I haven't got it now, but I must have been quite competitive Yeah. when I was a young fella, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you just couldn't be able to do it, you know, because there is a bloke there, six foot bloody eight, with a ball in his hand trying to knock your head off when you're batting and the bloke, that, you know, when you're bowling, he's trying to destroy you, you know. He's, try, he's trying to win for his country. He's trying to win for his family. He's trying to win for his friends and the supporters and the fans. And so you do feel that you are, you're not just playing for yourself when you walk out there. Yeah. You know, you're playing for a lot bigger sort of picture. You know, when you sit back it's now. It's great fun, uh, though. I've it's never done great it. Fun. It's great fun when you do well. When he don't do so well, it's not so great fun. I'm not a sporty person no, at all. <laughs> but we, you, we, when you do well, there's no better yeah. feeling. And when you put that, and you're saying, what's it like? You, you, you sort of like, when I got, first got selected, you then sort of think to yourself, oh, this is really exciting. And oh my God, oh my God. And you sort of like, you don't quite know what's going on. And then you sort of have that little sort of come down like that. And then sort of the bloke comes around, you know, in the white van. And gives you your cricket case, you know, and it's got your name on it, you know, and uh, the lions and everything. And you open it up, and you, you know, there's your England jumper, yeah. you know, your special jumper with your number on it, your England cap, your England blazer, and you think, bloody hell, you know, like this is, this is, uh, this is proper stuff, you know. Have you still got it? Yeah, I've still got. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I've given most of them away. I've still got my original first cap my first jumper and my first blazer. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. That's the only bit of memorabilia that I've got. I've given most of it away to charity. But um, but those are the ones that actually, you know, really mean something to you. Well, you know, when you, you think back to your career now, what stands out as your proudest moment, the, the moment you look back to and it just, you know, makes you feel good? Um, well, obviously, <laughs> when you do personally well, you yeah. know, and that then helps the team to to a victory, you know. But I, I, I would say that, I, and I know it might sound a bit naff, but um, just some of the times you've had with the boys, you know. Yeah. And I know everyone says it, you know, but you go on tour to the Caribbean or something or, the, or Australia or, or somewhere and there's sort of like 16 or 18 of you, you know what I mean? 
you're just laughing all the time. You know, okay, the cricket, you know, the, the, the cricket's sometimes tough and lots of pressure. You know, there's pressure to perform and there's pressure to succeed and pressure to win, you know. But, um, you know, so when that does happen, you know, it, it, it's great fun. But there are some downs sort of with that as well. Um, but just being there with the lads, you know, some of the banter, some of the yeah. chat, some of the mucking about. We used to muck about all the time, you know. Great fun. I've read some of the stories in the books. I oh, know. I mean, we were messing about, you know. I think I think things have slightly changed. I think that the sort of culture now has slightly changed now. I mean, the guys on a day off, you know, they still go to the gym. I mean, you know, why, why would you go to the gym on a day off? You know what I mean? They're still there doing that. I mean, they're like, you know, massive, these geezers now, and they're all fit and they're trained and they eat. I mean, I used to start every day with a full English, you know what I mean? Full English and, you know. I mean, it, 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 times have changed yeah. in sport a lot now, strength and conditioning and everything. I mean, we used to, I mean, listen, we were always fit, you know, we were always fit to play, cricket fit. But, um, you know, yeah, these guys nowadays have taken it to a different level. But I, I think that we had a, I think we had a bit of a better time. Yeah. Could you, could you do it now? <laughs> well, could you do what they do now, the whole conditioning and well, stuff? Well, absolutely, yes. I mean, as you say, times change. It's very yeah. difficult to then compare, isn't it? You know I mean? You can't say, was George Best better than Harry Kane? You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's just different. It's different levels. I'm sure George Best would have been the best footballer in this era. Yeah. So it's very difficult to compare sort of eras. But, uh, yeah, I would, have, I would have loved it nowadays, you know what I mean? We, we, were, we, were, we were sort of let freer a little bit, you know. I mean, I was playing with Alan Lamb, Ian Botham, David Gower, these kind of people, you know, who were, uh, you know, larger than life characters, yeah. huge characters. You know, they'd walk in a dressing room or walk in a, a stadium, you know what I mean? And, and They'd, they'd empty the bars, you know, and people would want to see them perform, you know, and play. Yeah. Huge characters. With, obviously, cricket, you know, you look at some careers, whether you're a singer, you can kind of go on and on and on. Yeah. But with sport, you are limited, you know, in, in a sense of your peak and your career. So when it came to you having to retire, yeah. how did you find that? You know, you're passionate, you love this sport, yeah. and now you have to kind of say goodbye yeah. to it in that sense. Tricky. Very, very tricky. Um, and I, I, I must admit that I didn't um, I didn't really think about it. You know, you think you're going to play and play and play. And uh, it, it can be a very awkward stage because what I, mean, I retired when I was 37, you know, and, that, you know, not with the money that all these footballers have got and everything, you know what I mean? I think I got 1,500 quid for my, last, for, my, for my last test match, you know what I mean? Times were different. And, uh, and then all of a sudden you think to yourself, well, crikey, well, what the bloody hell am I going to do now? You know, that, that's all I've done. I'm 37. Yeah. You know, you know, you, all right, you might have a few quid in the bank, but not enough to just swan <laughs> about and do nothing. So you've got to then find yourself a, another thing to do. You know, you've still got more than half your life left. And so I think that people, I, I think that a lot of sportsmen um, uh, get in a little bit of, have trouble with that, you yeah. Know? And I, you know, I don't want to sort of go on it, but you know, you know, talking about sort of like you know, mental health and things like that, or you know, having a few too many beers or what have you. I think that you know, I, I think that sportsmen and women, of course, uh, have a uh, have a bit of a problem with actually then seeing their future, you know, because they you put so much energy. And so much, you know, fitness and sacrifice and this and that and that to to become that sports person. And then all of a sudden you just go, right, you know, I'm, I'm too old. And so you do have a little bit of a tricky time then having to adjust. Well, the great thing with you is you've got such a good personality. And then in 2003, of course, uh, you went into I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. What a bit of luck that now, was. No, I was going <laughs> to say, it just kind of, it fell there for you. So Absolutely. How did that, because... I believe it was the second series. The first one you had Tony Blackburn yeah. that won it. So you didn't really know too uh, much about the show. Whereas if no, you went in now, you'd know what you're, you're letting even, yourself. I don't even think I've, I don't even think I watched the first one. Oh, oh wow! Well. I just retired. I just retired from Middlesex, and they've said, right, you know, you know the, the England stuff had gone, and you're 37, and you're, you're a bit old, and you know, uh, you know. And I was thinking to myself, oh crikey, well, what the hell am I going to do? You know, I hadn't planned about it. You know what I mean? I hadn't done any 
computer courses or, yeah. or anything like that. I didn't know what the bloody hell I was going to do, you know. Um, and then uh, I got a phone call about two weeks after, and they said, "Well, do you want to come? Do you want to come and do the jungle?" And I th- and I sat down. And I said, "I said, uh, I said, uh, do, do we fly first class <laughs> to Australia?" And they said, "Yeah." I said, "I'm your man." <laughs> Put the phone down, and uh, and then what a bit of luck! What a bit of luck! You know what I mean? Uh, won it. Yeah. You know, um, and it, I, it transformed my life. Did you expect to win it? Because that's no. such a, that's watched by millions of people, yeah. especially then. I mean, twenty years ago, I think it was fifteen. We, we we were roughly having sort of like fifteen million people a night wow. for, for two and, and a half it. weeks, solidly watching it. And you don't realise it because I didn't realise what was going on because you're sort of like you're sort of squirrelled away, you know, and you don't yeah. and you don't know what's going on, and you know they don't tell you the time and they don't tell you anything, you know. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, sort of two and a half weeks later, you're sort of out of this bubble that, uh, you know, you, you don't know what has gone on at yeah. all back home or anywhere in the world. I mean, it could have been anything. It could have been world wars going on and we'd still be sitting there eating bloody rice and beans, you know what I mean? Because we just, you just do not know. And then uh, uh, somehow won it, I don't know why, but, uh, you know, you just... There again, you just turn up every day. You open your eyes and off you go again. And, and you sort of, uh, you know, what will be will be. And uh, and then you win it. Uh, and uh, my wife Dawn was over there. And uh, you go back to the Versace and everything and you have a few drinks, hey, like that. And, you know, you start getting a few phone calls from your mates. And you start, you know, you just going, well, what's been going on? What's been going on? And then we landed... We landed in, uh, you know, Heathrow or wherever it was, and uh, we walked off the plane, plane, and there must have been 500 photographers there and a 1,000 people. And that's the first time you go, what the hell has been going on here for two weeks? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you just go, crikey. It takes your nut a bit of a time to sort of get, get your head round it a little bit, yeah. actually. And I can remember then going back to my... To our little house, and uh, you know, and there was people climbing over the fences. Wow. There was like five hundred people outside my front door. I'm going, door, what's been bloody, what's been going on for two weeks? You know what I mean? It was incredible. And I walked up uh, to McDonald's in our high street the day, about two days afterwards. And I, and uh, you know, you're sort of like crikey, and you sort of shut the curtains. And he's sort of like, oh, blimey, what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? You don't quite understand it. And then a few of your mates start talking about, oh, this is great, and oh, you know, it's great. And um, and I walked up to McDonald's, and uh, I'm walking along, and it's sort of like a precinct, you know what I mean, where cars can't walk, pedestrianised. And I'm walking along, and uh, I've sort of turned around. There's 500 people behind me. All going, oh, I feel, oh, I feel, I'm going, oh, like that, and I've walked into McDonald's, and the five hundred people came into McDonald's and all sat down, and I'm sitting there like that. We had to call the police, you know what I mean? I had to call the police. Everything. I'm sitting there with my cheeseburger like that, and there's just loads of people, all very enthusiastic and, and yeah. being nice, but go shaking your hand, that white mate. Oh, you know, nice to see you. Do you want a beer? Do you know what I mean? Oh, my mum loves you, and all that. You know what I mean? And I was just going. Crikey, O'Reilly, and then I had to get escorted out of McDonald's, you know, but not badly, you know what I mean, yeah. but just through people's um, sort of uh, exuberance, you know what I mean? And then they took me back, I got back to Dawn's, Dawn's, and I thought, I said, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what's going on? I just went with a cheeseburger, and I've had to be escorted out by the police. That's something else. Well, I know, and you just sit there and go, Wow, and then it sort of dies down a bit. I mean, that was the peak of it, yeah. you know, when he came back. But that two, three weeks was crazy, man. What did you think of the trials? Because that's the big part of the show. And, I mean, you did your fair share yes. in there. So what, oh. which one did you struggle with the most? Well, the eating one wasn't much. What did you fun. have? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That was when they still, they were still allowed to have things that were still alive. Oh. I mean, now it's... Um, you know, tofu and, and, and everything's got to be yeah, yeah. dead but um, that was when the things were still alive so you had to bloody catch them first you know oh. what I mean they were all running around you know and um, 
you know, they they said you will feel them wriggle them. You, oh. know, they, you will feel them sort of like moving around for a couple of minutes before you sort of the acid sort of Ooh. eats them up. Yeah, so that was a bit weird. They, uh, the last one I did uh, not so long ago, they slung me in a coffin with 150 snakes. That weren't much fun either. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah, that weren't much bloody fun, mate. I don't even like <laughs> the whole the whole buried alive bit was bad enough. <laughs> And then the buggers started throwing <laughs> snakes all in me like that. I was going, Jesus Christ. I wanted to talk about but the Gray, people. Sorry, but Gray, but Gray, I'll tell you something. People say, why do you do it? I'll tell you something. It half make you feel alive. Really? You know, you walk down. You walk down to those trials. Your heart is pumping. Yeah. It's a bit like when you walk out to bat or walk out to play for England. You know, you know that you're ticking. You know, you're not just going, ah, oh, this is all right. You know, I mean, you're, you know. Mm. The old, you get the eyes on, you know, and the heart's pounding, and you go, right, well, this ain't going to be much fun, you know what I mean? I don't like snakes, I don't like rats, I don't like being buried alive, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then when you do it, you know, you do sort of, but there again, it's a bit of a challenge, and you sort of go, oh, there you go, that was good, you know. Do you, do you get anxious? Because Ant and Deck, they come in, they give you the anxious. name of the trial, but you, you kind of work Massively. out what you think it could be. Massively anxious. Yeah. Yeah. Massively anxious. You physically, physically start shaking. You know what I mean. But I quite, I quite like that. You yeah, know what I mean? adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. And you're sort of going, well, something's happening here. You know what I mean? Come on, let's have a little go at it. You know what I mean? So that is quite a nice feeling. Some people don't like it. You know that. You know they don't want. You know, some people struggle to walk across the bridge. Yeah, to go I've to the trial. <laughs> Let alone what's at the end of the bloody trial, you know. So, but I mean, I, I, I take my hat off. I always say to people, I, I have a lot of people actually coming up to me and saying, you know, oh, Phil, they've asked me to do the jungle. What do you reckon? I say, do it. I say, it'll be the best experience of your life. If you're first out, well, no one wants to be first out. But um, even if you're first out or last out, you know what I mean? He said, it'll be the best experience of your life. You get to know about yourself, you know what I mean? It really is It really is a, a, a life-changing thing, you know? Well, we're going to go into a little bit later about your second time in there, but first time, you were with people like John Fashnu, Wayne Sleep, Sawyer Wilcox, uh, Daniela Westbrook. Who yeah. did you click with the most in your first time? Who did you enjoy having a conversation with? All of them. Yeah. Loved them all. Loved them all. Um, and I think that's why sports people do quite well on shows like that, because it's just like a dressing room. You know, yeah. I've been away for months on end with, with with the boys, you know what I mean? In all sorts of scrapes, you know, people falling out, you know, punch-ups, all sorts of things going on, you know. So um, I, I think that, uh, you know, a sports person's attitude is to when people are feeling down, you naturally try to lift them up, you know. And when people are up, you just sort of give them their space to enjoy it, you know, enjoy it. Yeah. You don't try to, you know... Butt heads with people, and I, I, I that's why I, I, I don't do that, you know what I mean? So, uh, I think some people might, you know, some people might uh, go in there with a bit of a game plan, but uh, I certainly didn't. Well, of course, I'm a celebrity, you became a, a big household name, yeah. but then a question of sport came calling yes. as well, and it just works so well. You, Matt, Sue, how did that opportunity come about for you to actually be the um, captain? Um, crikey, go back a few years now. Um, I, well, I've been on the show. I've been on the show about six or seven times as a player. I'd been asked along. I think Coisty was on there. John Parrott were the captains. And then, oh, I know why. I know why. Um, Ali McCoist, um went off to manage Rangers. Okay. Yes, when they were having a bit of trouble. I think they were, I think... They had a bit of tax problem or something, and uh, they got they got sort of like shunted down to the third division, I think, in Scotland, and they were looking for a manager. And so Coisty, of course, has uh, played for Rangers. I said, you know, you're not going to turn down yeah. that, you know, managing Rangers. And so he went off, and then I got the call. You know, would you fancy coming in to just have a little look? They gave me a couple of shows. Um, and uh, and then said, well, do you fancy sort of doing it full time? And I said, oh, well, it, it was part of my childhood yeah. growing up, you know what I mean? I remember sitting there with my mum, my brother, my dad. We'd split up, you know, into teams. We'd be on Emily Hughes' side or Bill Beaumont's side. And, uh, and then so to be uh, invited on the show 
when I was a kid playing for England, it was like a, well, I can still remember my mum saying, oh, you, you bloody made it. You're on question of sport. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going, well, hold on a minute. I've played a couple of times for England. You know, she said, sod England, you're on a question of sport. You know what I mean? And so... Um, and so it was a real sort of, a, it was like a badge of honour. Yeah. You know, you was on question of sport, you know, because we've all grown up with it, you know. And uh, and then, to then, um, and I, I just really loved it, just loved the banter, loved the messing about, and loved, you know, the quiz element of it. And it's such a lovely, warm show. You know, everyone has a great time. And then to be asked then to be captain, well, I mean, it was, it was like a, it was like a great honour. Well, it worked. You you watch some shows and there's not much chemistry, yeah. you know, on panel shows, but it just worked. Yeah. You bounced off each other. It, yeah. it always just felt right. Did you feel that yourself when you were with them? Was it like this was meant to be? Not particularly. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, you just, I mean, listen, we're, we're great friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've, uh, yeah, one thing I've always found, as you say, that's in any walk of life, you know, it, it, you're very lucky to work with people that you like. If you can work with people that you like genuinely yeah. and have the same sense of humour and the same banter and the same sort of work ethic and all that kind of things, uh, you know, things start to, uh, just, you know, naturally sort of come together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, we got on, we 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 got on like a house on fire from the day one. You know what I mean? And we still get on like a house on fire now. You know what I mean? We see each other. We go out for lunch or. You know, you might phone each other up once in a while, and and, and it, 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 I don't know what it is. Oh, chemistry, I don't know what it's yeah. called, but uh, we just have a great laugh. Well, you know, it was so successful. The ratings were there, but after many years, in uh, 2021, they announced that you three wouldn't be on the show. Oh, well, yes. How did that come about? Because the ratings were there. It was Absolutely. so successful. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Perhaps you can't do everything. You, you, you can't keep going on forever, perhaps. I mean... Uh, you know, I've done it for 13 or 14 years. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, there comes a time when you sort of like go, OK, well, they they want to go in a different direction and freshen things up. And you just go, well, OK, well, thanks very much for the memories. Loved every minute of it. Um, and actually, I would have done it for nothing. I would have well, done it for nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. it was such good fun to do. You get to meet all your sporting heroes. You know, and sportsmen and women are, you know, they're, they're, they're very nice people, you know, and very driven people, but, you know, they've got a very sort of like good sort of side to them, if yeah. you know what I mean. So it was great just to work with these kind of guys. You, were you shocked, though, the three of you? Because when you look at, like I said, the ratings are up, you just assume, right, it's working. There's no need to change something that's, that's not broken. So was that an element of kind of, we didn't expect this at all? Well, no, I mean, I mean, not really. I mean, I think that you then sort of get the feel that uh, they're trying to, they, they, they just tried to do something different. They wanted to do something different. As you said, we'd all been doing it for quite a long time. Yeah. So, you know, you can't be wheeling yourself out in, 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 you know, <laughs> or coming out on your Zimmer frame and going, hello, everyone, you know what I mean? So yeah. they just wanted, they just took it on a different path. Well, I mean, it's difficult because you're, you were on the show, but I mean, you were pulling in millions of people but when you left and they brought the new panel in it was going under a million and now it's not on screen anymore so this show that has been kind of an institution your mum was really proud that you were on it yeah is no longer on so yeah. if you were asked to go back would you or have you been approached by people like amazon or netflix to kind of do something similar well um i don't know it's a bit awkward really you know what i mean as you say they went out there to do the best job they could you know yeah. what I mean? So fair play to them. I say sometimes things don't work out. But you'd maybe go back if there was something similar. Because it, it well, was amazing and we knows? missed it. Who knows? Who knows? Fingers crossed. Um, the jungle came calling a second time. Yes. South Africa. So it was different. It was a new wow. experience. Yeah, what a place. What made you say yes a second time? Um, well, it was a few quid. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't lie. It was a few quid. Uh, which was great. Um, and also, mainly because of what I said earlier, it, it was just such a, the first time round is such, it's such an experience. I mean, when, it, it's just like the best ever 
extreme adventure holiday you will ever go on. You yeah. know what I mean? You come in on helicopters driven by SAS pilots and they're all going like that. You're jumping out of helicopters, you know, and, and you're, you're swinging through trees and all right, the food's not great and everything. But you, you, I don't know where else you could get that experience for nothing and paid a few quid. Uh, it, it's just such a, you know, and, and the, the surroundings are fantastic. I mean... You know, the, the first one in Australia is sort of like an extinct volcano, you know, which has then made itself a microclimate inside. It's just a ma- waterfalls yeah. coming off of things. And then we went to South Africa, you know, and there's baboons running about. I, saw, yeah. I know, and you know what I mean, and everything. And you just go, this is absolute, you know, it's amazing. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's just stunning. And, you know, and the scenery and the landscapes and everything, you know, and... And you're getting to do all these things. Listen, they're not going to kill you. You know what yeah. I mean. So you've always got that in the back of your head that you know you 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 got your harness on and you know and all that kind of stuff. So it's just you know to have that opportunity. Yeah. It's a huge show. I mean, there's about I don't know five hundred cameramen and you know outside the show. So there's there's your little bit there. You sort of go out there. Where you know, and you can't see it and everything. It's like a village. Yeah. You know, you've got doctors, you've got, you know, canteens, you know, for that can feed five hundred. You know what I mean? And it's just like a, it's like a town out there. It's a huge show to be part of, um, and so just the experience. I just said, yeah, no, come on, let's have it. Well, earlier in the interview, you were talking, obviously, when the cricketing career came to a, a stop, what were you going to do? And obviously mm-hmm. we've spoken about a lot, but Strictly Come Dancing, oh, when that came calling, I mean, that was that was something different. The fake tan, the outfit. That's <laughs> terrifying. A new world for you. That is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. No, g- give me the snakes any day of the week. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, that was terrifying. As you say, that that's live. Yeah. You know, there's millions of people watching that, and you've got, as you say, you've got a spray tan, you know, double dipped, <laughs> double dipped which I shouldn't have done. You know, you've got a cerise pink top slashed to the navel, <laughs> you know, and very tight trousers, uh, you know, and, and you just go, oh, my God. I mean, the first night we did that, people were fainting backstage, and these are these are like, um, you know, actresses and people who are on the stage, you know yeah. what I mean, and used to this kind of the bright lights and everything. But honestly, people would just go, oh, my God. And then you get called on to go and do the bloody, I don't know, Paso Doble, and you just go, what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> like that. And then you sort of go like that, and you just go, oh, my God, it was terrifying. It was terrifying. I, I, um, I mean, it was great fun, uh, but there was just, for me, there was still that, f- we've well, got to remember all your steps. Yeah. You know, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. It's quite hard. It's hard work. You know, we, <laughs> I was doing it seven hours a day, you know, for for six days, you know, trying to learn this dance as well as sort of doing a bit of work on, on, on you know, on the side sort of thing. Um, yeah, terrifying, mate, terrifying. You know, you just, and a couple of people have forgotten all the steps and you, you, and the, you don't just stop. You, yeah. If you just stop, you sit down. Yeah. And the band's still going, you know. <laughs> the band's still playing. You just go, I've oh, bloody forgotten it in front of 15 million people. Oh, terrifying. What about being judged? Because like you said, you're doing seven hours a day. You're yeah. actually putting your all into oh, this. Oh, you dance and then you're, you've are you got Craig, you've got Bruno. They're all judging. What was that like? Oh, well, it was all right. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to be a professional dancer and everything. One thing, one thing you know, my time had come when I got slug out. I sort yeah. of went, thank God <laughs> for that. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it was quite stressful, quite nerve-wracking. Um, but I got to Blackpool and then they gave me the uh, the rumba, the rumba. Which is the hardest Which dance. is the dance of love, you know. <laughs> and I had to go out there and do all this sort of like, you know what I mean? And all sort of like, oh, hello, hello, hello. Like that, I was just going, oh, my God, you know what I mean? And all my mates had come up to see it. I think, what a wally. I must look a complete... Plonker, you know what I mean? And then I survived one extra week, I think. I can't remember. But then again, great fun. You meet some lovely people, you know, you know still friends with a lot of people that you're on the show with. 
and what have you. But I don't think I quite got into that. There was still that sort of 5% of sort of self-consciousness. Yeah. You know what I mean? I couldn't quite let myself completely get taken over by the dance. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was still going, oh, bloody hell. Well, you had some legends like Bruce Forsyth, obviously, wow, yeah. hosting. That must have, even though obviously it was nerve-wracking, but yeah. to just be part of something that Absolutely. he's then presenting, because he he makes fun, you know, between the judges, the contestants. Yeah. What was it like to to be around Bruce? Absolutely fantastic, you know what I mean? I mean, didn't see too much of him, you know what I mean? He was sort of, you know, yeah. in his Winnebago, you know what I mean? But, I mean, such a professional uh, and, uh, you know, just knew exactly what was going on, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, no, I met Bruce many times during the show, you know, and, uh, you know, sort of picked the, his brains a little bit, you know yeah. what I mean? Hello, Bruce. Oh, hello, Phil. You know what, right, mate? You know what I mean? I'm glad it's bloody Bruce for so, You know what I mean? <laughs> great fun. And I'll tell you another thing great about it, actually, was there was a couple of occasions. I mean, I was very lucky. I was dancing with some sort of, you know, world champion. You know what I mean? A world champion. Yeah. So if you're going to be taught anything, get taught by a world champion yeah. for seven or eight weeks or whatever, you know. And uh, there was a couple of times when it did go right, you know, and you got your foot in the right place and you did the spin at the right time and you did the twirl at the right time and then finished lovely. And you thought, oh, that was nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was actually nice. You know, what are they saying? You know, like... Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers or something, you know what I mean? They sort of like dancing on air. You know, it only happened to me about twice. <laughs> but on a couple of occasions, you got it all right. And he thought, wow, well, that was fantastic. Yeah. Feel proud. Well, no, not only proud, but there was a there was a sort of a fluidity. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. There was a sort of a a flow, you know, where you went, do 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 do. Oh. Bu, 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 Oh, and, he thought, and it all just went lovely instead of going, oh, 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 oh I've got that wrong. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my dance partner said dancing with me was like moving furniture. <laughs> <laughs> get over here. <laughs> get over here. No, but so on the other occasion, when he got it all nice, it was a lovely feeling. You look like you're ready to get up and well, do a little number go. for us. I still, I still, I still, I still, I still. Twist Dawny round the kitchen a couple of times. That's like my mum and dad. They yeah. do it every, every weekend. Oh, do they? Well, there you go. So you know that. You know that. You uh, know that. Obviously, before you went on Strictly, uh, sports stars had done very well, you know, and yeah. cricket players had, well, yes. had done well. So there, oh. there was a kind of pressure until you were on there, you know. Yeah, Goffey won it. Mark Rampakash won it. Uh, there again, I think, that, I think that the sports people... Have a slight. Uh, well, well, they take instruction very well. Yeah, you know what I mean because they they're coached, they're taught things, and so they have a brain that sort of naturally sort of like absorbs information and then tries to put it out on the field, and that's what you try to do there. So I think that um, that it didn't help me. <laughs> it didn't help me. My time was well and truly up when I left. I mentioned earlier, obviously, now you do, you know you write books about your career, your time on the road, your yeah. tours, and but there was one story that did make me laugh, which was the safari on with the open top. Oh. Uh, tell, can you tell everyone about that? Because that's that's quite something. We went to South Africa and we were on these open top um, Land Rovers and everything, driving around, and uh, you know, there's cheetahs and elephants and everything, and it's open top. <laughs> And all of a sudden, uh, we, we was with a team, and we, we'd come across this kill, and there was a pride of lions like that, and the bloke's driven right up to it, like that. It's all these eyes like that, you know. And this is an open, you know, they're just there, yeah, they're just there like <laughs> that, just there like that. And then all of a sudden, this male lion, he started sort of like. He's, he started clocking us properly, and I'm going, hold on a minute, this ain't right. He's going, he started walking towards it. What I didn't realise, that Graham Swan was in the back, uh, was in the seat behind me, and it was red hot, and he'd taken his England tracksuit off, and he was a Newcastle United fan. And he had a Newcastle <laughs> United top on, which, of course, 
is black and white stripes. <laughs> so I think, I think the, the, the lion thought it was a bloody zebra. And he's going, and I'm going, I'm oh, too much a swabby, what are you doing? Like that, he's going to walls, well, so put your bloody tracksuit on. He was nearly in the thing, and then the bloke had to sort of come over and get this big sort of prod and prod him away. I mean, Jesus, swabby. And yeah, so any, other, any other football team would have been all right. Christ. Oh, there's so many stories like that in the books. There right? is. It's, it's great. Well, we are going to go over to the audience now. So we're going to get um, Shane to put the camera over. I'm going to get the audience to ask you some questions uh, okay. before we have a little chat about what you're doing and your yep. upcoming projects. So over to Mr. Solomon. So who's got a question? Yeah. Oh, hi, Phil. Hello. Welcome. Um, you mentioned there your success, obviously, with cricket and, and the rumba. Um, and you mentioned football as well. What, yeah. what would have been your football team you would have aspired to? to play for if you went that direction? Arsenal, Arsenal. Arsenal, Arsenal right. yeah. North London boy, born and bred. Uh, nice. Always have been. Arsenal family, my father. Uh, and there's a little bit of a connection with the cricket, actually. Dennis Compton uh, played for Arsenal oh. and Middlesex. Uh, nice. I played for Middlesex. So uh, Dennis Compton was my father's hero when he was growing up. So, uh, yeah, to score... Uh, a goal in the FA Cup final for the Arsenal, I think, yeah. would be right up there for me. Nice one. Nice yeah. one. Also, what do you think of the chances of uh, England on the Euros? What's your thoughts? Well, um, having seen them play against <laughs> Denmark, <laughs> I thought we had a bit of a chance before that, but they didn't. They didn't particularly um, uh, provide the best performance. But you never know. I think we've got the talent there. Yeah. We've got the talent there, and I think that's why. It's a little bit frustrating. I mean, it's always been a bit frustrating for England Boys, football yeah, fans, definitely. hasn't it? But uh, I, I, I think that you look at that group of guys, I think that those group of guys, you know, they all play for Man City, you know, Champions League winners, Bellingham, Real Madrid and all yeah. these kind of guys. You're just thinking to yourself, well, crikey, all right, surely, guys, you know... Yeah. It, it You've got to play a bit side. better than that. It You've got to play a bit better than that. What are you been doing? But uh, it's very, I know myself, having played for England cricket, you know, sometimes you're trying your best and it just don't work out for you. You know what I mean? Nice one. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, who, who, anyone else got a question? Thank you. Hiya. Hiya. So what do you do? Now? Obviously, you, you play cricket and you play football earlier on. What do you do now to keep yourself fit? Do you, do you still dabble or don't you do anything? <laughs> I haven't got any knees left. Uh, left shoulder's gone. Uh, left wrist hurts. Lower back. Um, so sport gives you a lot when, when you're growing up. And then when you retire and get a little bit older, uh, it starts taking it back from you a little bit. So I like, I don't mind a game of golf. Um, you know, I like shooting. Uh, and uh, uh, just, yeah, I should be a little bit more active. A gentler sport. Gentle sport, yes. <laughs> you know, I'm lucky, I'm lucky, I'm light. I'm a skinny lad. So, uh, you know, some of the boys, bless them, you know, they stop playing and they do have a bit of trouble with that because you're always, you know, you're pre-season training and what have you, but I'm quite lucky like that metabolism or something I don't know um, uh, but yeah a little bit of golf and uh, walking down the pub and back <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much have we got any other questions so you've done the jungle twice yes. and you said you loved it and it was an amazing experience would you do it a third time and if you did or could who would you like to go in there with you oh blimey Oh, what a good question. Okay, right. uh, would I do it a third time? Um, I probably would. I probably would, you know. I probably would. Um, uh, and who would I go in there with? Well, I mean, I don't know. I'd probably get all my old cricket mates. Get all my old cricket mates. Obviously, my wife, Dawn, she'd have to be in there. Of course she would. Um, but um, I'd probably get to get all my old. Or, or a load of sporting people. Have a sporting uh, yeah. um, jungle why not you know something like that there'd be some great you'd be sitting around the fire listening to some some good stories I tell you if they'd be public if they could be broadcast <laughs> maybe that's an idea front and deck then <laughs> yeah not bad yeah not a bad idea but uh, yeah probably I, I would do it again I would do it again as I said earlier it, it was such an experience it, you know they don't mess about on that show 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, yeah, when you mentioned Arsenal earlier, my mum and dad both kind of, because they're Tottenham. Oh. I'm Tottenham as well. So we're, oh, yeah, are you? I'm Tottenham. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Should have told you at the beginning. It doesn't get a bigger rivalry than that. So thank you for your questions. Um, we're just going to, I want to talk about what's kind of next for you now. So what projects you're working on or, or what you've got coming up? Well, uh, obviously still doing the uh, the cricket. Yeah. Love doing that. Fantastic. I love doing the TV and the radio, commentating on the cricket for the BBC. We've got such a great team down there. It's so enjoyable without some bloke trying to knock your head off with a rock at 90 mile an hour. You get exactly the same sort of um, atmosphere. You get out on the pitch, you're interviewing all the guys, and then you go off and have a cup of tea and sit down and have a chat about it. Nice. So it's absolutely... It, it is the second best thing to actually play. Uh, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, so that's just cut around the corner. Uh, doing some theatre shows, uh, which I'm really enjoying as well. Uh, as you say, my book just won the Times Sports Entertainment Book of the Year. Wow, well yeah, done. Yeah, The Tourist, which I was really chuffed with, actually. Um, and yes, listen. Do a bit of after dinner speaking here and there, or what have you. Just, uh, just in, in, enjoying, you know, the summer. Yeah, you know, enjoying the summer and seeing what turns up. You know, busy doing nothing. Well, to help you enjoy the summer, just before you go, we have got some drinks from Skinner's Brewery. Oh, lovely. for you. Here um, we go. So we've got some of these that we'd like to give you. Cornish knocker. Oh, I say. <laughs> go on. Fourth Levin. Oh, they look nice, lovely. There thank we you. go. And we got yeah. one for Christmas there for you. So thank you so much <laughs> for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. And I know the audience have. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you mate. Thanks. <laughs>